Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Killed in Mexico, Jose Arredondo, a well-known Bakersfield car dealer, found dead inside of his home. New information from prosecutors still ahead. Surveying the damage, a new look at the mess left behind after a pair of strong earthquakes hit near the China Lake Naval Air Base. And about a week and a half after the earthquakes, a town hall is held for those living in the desert communities. The message officials have for those in Ridgecrest as the ground continues to shake. Good morning. It is 5 a.m. It is Wednesday, July 17th. I'm Tabitha Mills in for Maddie Jensen alongside Alex Fisher, Kevin Charette. And we're still feeling some of those. Yeah, I got to say, yesterday I did feel the 4.4 or 4.5, I should say, uh, yesterday evening. But I say that because I also want to say that I was also, like, in my bed, just, like, not moving at all. Right. And felt a little bit of shaking. And if it was any other day, if it was before there were quicks, I don't think I would have even Right. We're all a little edgy. I think because we're still on edge, we feel every little thing. And so, sure enough, I checked on my phone at the same time and everything. And I know that uh, our associate producer, Raquel... Uh, Vegas, she said that she felt the earthquake, one of the aftershocks yesterday at her home uh, around 7.30 last night. Just depends on where you're at. And again, we uh, emphasize that they say this is going to continue for a long time. And it's normal. It's normal. It's normal. So uh, on the weather uh, side of things, we're near normal in terms of temperatures. Uh, We're in the uh, 90s still. We're going to keep us that way. A little cooler as we head into the weekend as well. As mentioned, yesterday our high was 97 degrees. Uh, The record on that day was 115, set back in 1925. And they can keep that. As we take a look outside right now, 70 degrees in Bakersfield with just a light wind out of the northwest at 6 and as we take a look at the temperatures throughout the day by 9 a.m. 80 86 at 11 and then we'll be back into the upper 90s by this evening and then for the mountains starting out right now at 59 you have a northwest wind at 7 I do expect the breeze pick up a little bit this afternoon and new this morning CHP is investigating a deadly multi-vehicle crash it happened just after midnight along southbound I-5 just north of highway 46 and lost hills According to CHP traffic incident page, two semi-trucks and one other car were involved. The CHP says one person from the car was ejected and at least one person died in the crash. No word on if that was the same person who was ejected or if anyone else was hurt in this crash. New information this morning in the death of a Bakersfield car dealer. The body of Jose Arandondo was found inside his home in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, yesterday morning. And now the Associated Press is quoting prosecutors in that resort town who say Arandondo was beaten to death. His body showing, quote, obvious signs of trauma. Arredondo owns several car dealerships in Kern County, including Family Motors, Bakersfield, Acura, and Delano Buick GMC. He also owned dealerships throughout the San Joaquin Valley, including Fresno GMC and Hanford Hyundai. Arredondo's was a classic rags-to-riches American success story. He was one of 11 children who grew up picking crops in Mexico before crossing the desert at night to enter the United States. Those who knew Arredondo say he was a well-respected businessman who was always willing to help people. Funeral arrangements are still pending. The search for two teen boys who disappeared in the Kern River has ended. The coroner has identified the bodies of Ivan and Hugo Esquivel. Family members say the cousins jumped into the river near Keysville while celebrating on Father's Day, but neither made it out. 16-year-old Ivan was found more than a week later on July 2nd. Yesterday, the sheriff's office confirmed the body of 19-year-old Hugo was found a day later on July 3rd near the Black Gulch campsite. Both teens were from the San Bernardino area. The coroner has also identified a man who was carried off by the river on the 4th of July. KCSO says 22-year-old Alan Aurelio Ramirez was found dead in the river near Sandy Flat Beach. KCSO crews recovered his body last Thursday. The Kern River can look inviting, but officials continue to warn that the currents are too strong and can turn deadly very quickly. We're getting a new closer look at the havoc a pair of earthquakes wreaked on the China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station. The base posted these photos on its Facebook page. Just about everywhere you look, items are toppled, concrete is busted, and things are broken. China Lake is located just outside the city of Ridgecrest, where a 6.4 and 7.1 magnitude quake hit July 4th and 5th. The base is home to 4,000 employees and more than 1,300 buildings. 
506 now, and he may be in Washington, but that's not stopping Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy from checking on his constituents in Ridgecrest. Last night, he held a telephone town hall to talk about updates on the recent quakes that hit, hit near Ridgecrest and Trona. 17's Karen Wall listened in and has more. Congressman Kevin McCarthy brought in local leaders and organizations, including FEMA, the U.S. Geological Survey, and others, to check in with the Ridgecrest community. We do have folks showing. Ridgecrest is moving from response mode to recovery. This community, which I've lived in for 45 years, is the most incredible place in the world. We have disaster mental health workers out there. Someone needs just a hug or someone to talk to you about what's been going on. But there's still potential for more damage. A 4.5 aftershock striking northwest of the city around 1.15 Tuesday afternoon. So in the next six days, there could be as many as 50 magnitude threes and up to three magnitude fives. Congressman Kevin McCarthy announced $100 million of federal aid was just approved. And we were able to pass that through the House unanimously. And that's not very often that happens in, the, in this body. Ridgecrest quickly opened a local assistance center, or LAC, a hotline for residents to call with any needs. And that was a huge success. People were getting diapers and counseling and food and help with their utility bills and, and temporary housing. The Red Cross has also counted nearly a thousand overnight stays at their evacuation center. And we just want to assure everybody that the shelter is going to remain open as long as needed to assist families. However, Police Chief Jed McLaughlin confirmed there are still 36 families living there. And the city is assessing damage on 800 homes. But where we're running into problems is the lack of available housing right now. You know, a lot of people that were displaced were low income, so finding them residents that they can afford is an issue right now. While local leaders say there is much work to be done, they have repeatedly thanked the volunteers who've stepped up to help out. I'm Karen Hua, 17 News. And tomorrow, Ridgecrest Police invite you to come and have a cup of coffee and celebrate and thank first responders two weeks after the first quake hit. It's happening from 10 to 1 at the Starbucks on North China Lake Boulevard. Welcome back. At a moment's notice, utility companies that service Kern County could cut off your power, all depending on the threat of wildfires. It all stems partially from the devastating campfire that tore through Butte County last fall, killing 85 people and burning down thousands of homes. State investigators say PG&E power lines caused the fire. The utility filed for bankruptcy protection back in January after it faced an estimated $30 billion in fire liabilities. In an effort to protect PG&E and SoCal Edison from liabilities in the future and to protect you from wildfires, the utilities are prepared to shut off your power if the wildfire threat is high enough. But questions remain about what exactly warrants such a power grid shutoff. We're either seeing the lines dancing uh, up and up and down, which can cause sparks, or we're seeing hearing tree branches break or palm fronds blowing through the air. Uh, our operations people will take that information directly to our incident commander, and they'll make the decision to de-energize. You're going to be shutting down electrical power to businesses, to hospitals, to restaurants, to uh, a whole bunch of people. And if the thresholds that you maintain are steady throughout the time you make them, and the same people are making the same subjective decisions or objective decisions, then who's going to want to do business in the Kern River Valley? Kern County Fire Chief David Wood also expressed concerns, noting a power shutoff could impact fire operations, including pressure to fire hydrants. SoCal Edison says it's working on a five-year plan to eliminate controlled blackouts in the future. 521 now, and he has cerebral palsy and is legally blind, but that does not stop him from doing what he loves to do. His name is Jacob Long, and he is the owner of J-Man's Plants, and I'll let him take it from here. Yes, I own a business here in Bakersfield called uh, J-Man's Plants. Meet Jacob Long, also known as J-Man. Yep, J-Man himself. He's an entrepreneur. I, I go out to events and I sell my plants to people in the Bakersfield commu community. Jacob grows and sells succulents. Because they're easy to maintain and they're easy to take care of. He does everything, 
raising tiny cutlings into beautiful potted plants. Potting the, the plants, you know, putting the soil in there, um, watering, and I'm um, also going out to my um, to my garden and watering my garden. And I just have a lot of fun, and I I love going to events and I'm meeting people, and people like my uh, plants. Jacob also has cerebral palsy and is legally blind. But that doesn't stop me from doing what I love to do. A part of that, thanks to New Options Employment Services, an organization aimed at helping people with disabilities find employment or create a business. These clients, every single one of them uh, has faced obstacles in certain ways and uh, some of them have been told that they can't do things and these clients have such great potential and they have something to offer the community. Although I need a good place to buy locally grown succulents, to me, what J-Man offers our community has nothing to do with his product. He definitely does not let his dif disabilities define him in any way, shape or form. If you want to start a business like me, don't let your disabilities hold you back. If you have a, a disability and you have a passion like me, don't let your disability stop you and just, just keep on going. You can find J-Man's plants at First Fridays in downtown Bakersfield. You can also find him on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for J-Man. It's very impressive. Welcome back in your 17 Business Watch. If you've got money in the bank, you know how low saving rates are. Is there any way to earn a lot more without too much risk? Money expert Stacy Johnson is here with some ideas. Nothing is more a double-edged sword than interest rates. While they've risen recently, they're still historically low. Great for money borrowers, terrible for money savers. Earning more on your savings isn't easy and it isn't risk-free, but what it is, is possible. Here are some ideas. First, shopping. Online rate searches make shopping for higher savings rates a breeze. But don't stop there. Because they're nonprofit, credit unions often offer higher rates than big banks. Then there's Wall Street. While investing in stocks obviously entails risk, there are plenty of stocks out there that are both decent dividend payers and decent investments. AT&T, for example, is paying more than 5% of dividends. Wells Fargo isn't paying much on their savings accounts at the bank, but they were recently paying their shareholders about 3%. If individual stocks aren't your thing, that's fine. You can use mutual funds or ETFs and buy into stocks for as little as 25 bucks. Next idea, bonds. All they are is IOUs from corporations or government agencies, and you can use mutual funds or ETFs to buy those as well, just like you can with stocks. But you got to be careful with bonds now. If you're in long-term bonds and interest rates go up, well, those bond prices can come down. An idea that's simpler to understand? Peer-to-peer -peer lending at sites like Prosper or Lending Club. You loan money out to individuals, you collect interest. Finally, think outside the box. For example, real estate. Depending on where you live, you might be able to earn more as a landlord than you can at the bank and maybe get some appreciation too. Now, all these ideas require you taking some degree of risk, which means you need some degree of knowledge. And if you can't take that risk, if you don't have time to gain that knowledge, well, there's only one thing left for you to do, and that's just wait. Ultimately, interest rates will probably go up again, and the scale will again tilt in favor of savers. But in the meantime, learn a little. Go to MoneyTalksNews.com and do a search for investing. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacey Johnson. Money Talks is brought to you by your local consumer credit counseling service. If you've got debt problems or just want some free budget counseling, call today. 